The Prime Minister and a new delegation tour new aspects of the LPIA. I'm Joe Davis Schultz. Stay tuned for that story coming up. As of today, web shops are legal. The details straight ahead. A prominent businessman faces fraud charges. We've got those details, so stay tuned. Now in HD. ZNS Network presents The Bahamas Tonight. This portion of the news brought to you by BTC Every Day. Good evening, Bahamas. Welcome to the Bahamas Tonight Monday. I'm Altafiz Munnings. Topping the news tonight, the Bahamas government moving to solidify this country's aviation sector. It's an initiative that could not only propel the industry to a new level, but also create greater measures for safety standards. Today, the Prime Minister led a delegation on a tour of the multi-million dollar radar facility at Linden Pinley International Airport. And John Davis Rowe, who's working with us here in New Providence for a short time this week, tells us tonight that Mr. Christie believes it's designed to put this country country on the cutting edge in aviation. The Linden Pinling International Airport is a major gateway for flights in and out of the nation's capital. And now this premier facility can boast of having a multi-million dollar state-of-the-art new radar center. The nation's leader, the Prime Minister, the Right Honorable Perry Christie, leading a government delegation on a tour to view firsthand the significant advancement in aviation. We visited the tower um, with that sort of globe-like top to it and we walked up to the very top of it to look at the sophisticated equipment and we came here to the control tower as it exists and we we've actually seen how the improvements will be um, such a dramatic improvement um, to this and I really it's my job to note that the Minister of Transport has worked very effectively um, to address some of the significant challenges um, that she faced in aviation and she is now in the process of introducing to the capital um, New Providence and the airport environs here um, what is in fact 21st century radar um, operation. Another component to this overall redevelopment is the construction of a new facility. A facility officials say that will tie in to the existing operations. We've had a argue sort of arguably a very difficult process leading to this point with respect to our capacity to effectively manage the Linden Pinling International Airport and the airspace connected therewith, meaning planes coming in and planes going out. Um, the current air traffic controllers are working on the ASR 8, um, um, I am advised, um, the former government had purchased the SR-9, which posed great difficulties, was never ever implemented, um, installed. We're now trying to make the best of that, to in adapt that to what is going to be the introduction of the ASR-12. Minister responsible for transport and aviation, the Honorable Glennis Hannah Martin, says this major investment will not only make the Bahamas the envy of the region, but also pave the way for new era in aviation administration. The PM spoke about the $150 million investment nationwide. And um, as we speak, we have two new persons in, uh, who are being trained at LPIA by NAD who will take over management of two of our major airports, and there's a third person coming in. So we're now moving to 21st century leadership at our airports within the islands to bring the appropriate aviation leadership. The construction of this new facility augurs well not only for LPIA, but also making this destination safer than ever before. Reporting for ZNS Network News, I'm Joan davis Roll. Well, still on aviation, we can tell you that a preliminary report is now in on that fatal airline crash in Grand Bahama, which killed nine on board, including senior pastor of Bahamas Faith Ministries, Dr. Miles Monroe. Minister of Transport and Aviation, the Honorable Glennis Hannah Martin, revealing today that details from that initial crash report will be released in short order. But she says, though, local and foreign technical experts will be meeting in a few weeks to carry out an analysis of those findings is that early December, um, around early December, all parties who are involved in the investigation, the NTSB, the FAA, Bombardier, and the Department, Civil Aviation Department, will come together 
and do an analysis of all of the available um, evidence and information. And out of that, they will um, surmise or, or tell us what is what they deem to be the cause of the accident. So that that is that should be begin in a few weeks time. So we, we await that outcome. That's going to be critical. In other news this Monday, the stage is now set for a regulated gaming industry right here in the Bahamas. The highly anticipated gaming bill is now in effect with web shops, as of today, operating in a regulated environment. But web shop bosses say they're ready as it's only the beginning for the sweeping changes expected for the local gaming industry. C.S. Gatterley tells us more. Now that the gaming bill is in effect, it will not be business as usual for web shops across the country. Calling it a historical day for the local gaming industry, Island Lux CEO Sebast Bastian says he met with authorities last week on what will be allowed under this regime. Our PDA uh, department, that's not allowed anymore, the mobile bookies, the, that was taken away. So we had to make the rearrangement and shutting that program down. There's um, a lot of other stuff as it relates to player payouts. There, there were some adjustments made with that. And it, it was, it's, a, it's a long, extensive list. I mean, I can't remember all of them right now. But, you know, we're, we're spending this entire week just basically re, 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 reframing a lot of the in, internal policies and procedures and making them compliant with the new act. Already work has begun for Island Luck to operate in a regulated environment as internal adjustments are being made to ensure that they're fully compliant. Moving forward, Bastian says web shop operators have to make a full disclosure to the government, go through the extensive request for proposal process, and then wait to see if they will be granted a license. Meantime, Bastian revealed how accountants are working overtime to ensure that the company pays the government its retroactive tax on December 1st and it's back taxes and penalties on January 12th. We can't just go out there and open up a location like we could have yesterday. Uh, right now, if I wanted to open a new location, I would have to write to the gaming board telling them where it is that I want to open, and then it has to be approved. So every, even though we're not licensed holders yet, the law, everything in the law, all of the penalties, the, uh, the do's, the don'ts, all that is applicable today. Our news team caught up with FML CEO Craig Flowers, who declined to comment on the matter on camera, but he did tell us that this is the first step in a very long process, and he plans to address the issue in its entirety in the coming days. C.S. Scatterly, ZNS Network News. Well, only our cameras were on the scene when the body of a man was found dead on a private property off Seabreeze Lane this afternoon. The man, who police say was dressed in dark clothing, could have been killed at the hands of two male suspects who police say are still on the run. Now, eyewitnesses reported seeing the victim being chased, and exactly what occurred after that is still not clear at this time. Officer in charge of the police force's Eastern District, Assistant Superintendent Warren Johnson, told us that initial investigations into this matter are underway. 12.30 today's date. The police received a report of a body being discovered on an open lot just through this area. As a result of that information, officers from the mobile division proceeded to investigate. Upon their arrival, they discovered the lifeless body of a dark male who we do not know at this time is identity. Um, we made checks of the surrounding area and we discovered that shortly before he was discovered, found on that lot, he was being chased by two other individuals with an object in their hand. We're in the early stages of the investigation at this time. However, we'd like to seek the public's assistance and in any information they'll be able to provide to us that would help us identify these two individuals who we would like to speak to them to see what is their connection in relation to this body that was found. In the magistrate's court today, a local businessman was charged in connection with several fraud-related offenses, spanning off a seven-month period. Our Janina L. Ferguson was in court as the accused was called on to answer to those charges. 
Businessman Warren Wilson in the white shirt, blue jeans appeared before Magistrate Wilhelmina Archer in court number 10 Monday afternoon to answer to several counts of fraud. It's alleged that between March 21st and October 27th, 2014, Wilson conspired with others to commit fraud by false pretenses. It's also alleged that during that same period, Wilson conspired with Philippa Bethel Lamphill and others to commit fraud under false pretenses in the amount of $22,000. It's further alleged in other charges that between May 21st and October 22nd, Wilson conspired with Stephen Capron to commit fraud under false pretenses and collected goods and cash worth some $43,000. He pleaded not guilty to all of the charges and hopes to have his case heard in the magistrate's court. Now, Wilson returns to court on February 23rd, 2015. He was granted bail of $30,000 with two shorties. Janae Noel Ferguson, ZNS Network News. This portion of the news is brought to you by Lux Men's Warehouse.